Hello viewers at home. You're welcome to your favorite program, Learn at Home. My name is Abaranta Emmanuel, your basic science teacher. Today, we shall be teaching just one. Our topic today is food and nutrition. Food and nutrition. I know that all of us are conversant with food. We eat food. Yes, we get hungry once in a while and we put things in our mouths because we have the desire and the need for such things we put in our mouths. Those things that pass through our mouths, either solid or liquid, for the purpose of giving us strength, nourishing our body, or keeping us healthy, we all see them as food. So food is anything we eat or drink for the purpose of body nourishment. That is food. When we look at food, food is grouped basically into either liquid or solid. But whether liquid or solid, it is taken for the purpose of either bodybuilding or for the purpose of energy or for the purpose of replenishing the worn out tissues. Whatever is the reason for taking food, the essence of it is that food should keep the body regenerated. There are different classes of food. Food could exist as either grains or food could exist as nuts. Food could also exist as roots or tubers. Food could also be prepared. When food is prepared, we eat. We have foods like rice, beans that are already cooked that we eat. We also have foods that, are, that can be eaten raw. We have foods that you have to cook them before you eat. Some of them exist as leaves. Some of them exist as seeds. Some of them exist as nuts. Some of them exist as grains. All are seen as food because they are taken for a purpose. Classes of food. Classes of food. The food we eat, they are numerous. This is dependent on culture. This is dependent on geographical locations. The food that is found in the north. Let's take Nigeria for instance as a case study. The food we eat in the northern part of Nigeria among the houses is different from the type of food you eat in the southern parts of Nigeria among the Igbos or even in the west among the Yorubas. They all have names and so on. But all these foods put together, whether as finished or as raw, are classified under six major headings. I will see them as classes of food. The number one class of food is the one we refer to as the carbohydrates. Carbohydrates. That is the energy giving food. The carbohydrates. We also have the protein. This, the bodybuilding food. We also have the fats and the oil. These are body lubricants. They help to keep the body lubricated. The skin oiled. We are seen, they are seen as body lubricants. We also have the vitamins and the minerals. The vitamins are those foods that protect the body against invading infections and diseases. They are seen as vitamins. We also have the minerals. The minerals are those that keep the body regulated. They regulate the body, maintaining balance in the system. The components of the body have to maintain a balance. Now, regulating the body to keep the body in a balanced condition, in an equilibrium balance, is being done by the minerals, the type of food we take that is seen as mineral. And then finally, we have water. You know, most times when we talk about water, people will say common water. Little did we know 
that water is a very wonderful food. Water is a class of food. In fact, a very wonderful food. We are going to take them one at a time to look at them as they apply. Number one, we will start with the carbohydrates. Carbohydrates. The carbohydrates. The carbohydrates is seen as the energy giving food. They are characterized by high level of energy which they possess. The energy components in the carbohydrates is the nutrients which is containing the carbon molecules, the hydrogen molecules, and the oxygen molecules put together and is referred to as the carbohydrates. Very rich in starch and contain high components of energy. Example of this kind of food include the rice. We know rice. We know yams. We also have the guinea corn, millets. We have maize, cocoa yam. Now, from what I have said, you see that I've been mentioning only two types of food. I've been talking about the tubers and I've been talking about the grains. So, to, to generalize it, it is easy to say all the grains and all the tubers are components of carbohydrates. All the grains and all the tubers are components of carbohydrates. When carbohydrate is eaten, it goes into the body and it is broken down by a process we refer to as digestion. When it is completely broken down in the system, it releases energy in form of a nutrient we refer to as glucose. So the end digestion of these carbohydrates gives the body what we call glucose. That glucose is the precursor that is responsible for giving out energy. And that is why we refer to carbohydrates as energy giving food because it contains high content of this glucose. Look at this. Carbohydrate can be taken as a paste. It can be taken into poultry. It can be baked, easily baked. It can also be taken as finished products. They are carbohydrate food. The next is protein. Protein is seen as body building food. It has components in it that helps in replenishing the worn out tissues that build the body. Examples of protein include the nuts and the legumes. The nuts and the legumes are proteins. But when we look at protein, it is not only sourced from plants. Protein can also be sourced from animals. Protein can also be sourced from animals. And when proteins are sourced from animals, they are seen as animal protein. So we have protein classified into two. We have the plant protein and we also have the animal protein. Protein is sourced from plants and protein is sourced from animals. So the plant protein is different from animal protein. Plant protein are those protein substances that are gotten from plants. While the animal protein are those protein substances that are gotten from animals. Now when we talk about animal protein, it includes flesh. Flesh can be the flesh of a fish, the flesh of a chicken, the flesh of any meat or any animal. They include flesh. It can be from milk. It can also be from egg. The egg now is from birds. Can be from eggs. It is it. But the end product, when it is taken into the body and it has passed through digestion, that's the breaking down of the food substances, the end product of it is that it gives a component which we refer to as amino acids. So protein gives to the body amino acids. Remember what I said about carbohydrates. I said it gives to the body glucose, 
Now you can see protein. Protein gives to the body amino acid. The amino acid is that component that is responsible for the body building. It is the amino acid component that is found in the proteinous food that brings about body building. And it is this amino acid that brings about the replenishment of the worn out tissues of the body. These are examples of proteinous food. That's the nuts. The nuts. Example, granuts, bambara nuts, mukuna nuts, and so on. Prepared meats, prepared fish, and so on. Chunks, eggs, cakes, and other finished goods. They are examples of proteinous food. We also have another class of food which we refer to as the fats and the oil. Fats and the oil. I told you that the fats and the oil is a component of food that helps in body lubrication. In fact, they are seen as body lubricants. Body lubricants. The fats and the oil are classified into two. When we talk about fats and oil, the fat and oil is classified into two. We have what we refer to as saturated fats and we have the unsaturated fats. The, the saturated fats is that type of fat that all the components of the carbon in it, it's having hydrogen. And because of that, at room temperature, you notice it, it is solid at room temperature. Any fat that if you keep it, it slips. That type of fat is referred to as saturated fat. And because of that, it's not very good for consumption. We also have the unsaturated fats. That's the type of fat or oil when you keep them at room temperature, they are not solidified. They don't cake at room temperature. And because of that, they are good for eating. Now, saturated fats, are mainly found in animals. They are mainly found in animals, the saturated fats. And the unsaturated fats are mainly found in plants. Plants contain oil, and most of the oils are unsaturated fats. While animals contain oil, and most of the oil are saturated fats. So the saturated fat is not very good for consumption. We, we also have that fats, when it is taken into the body, it also passes through the process of breaking down, just like any other food. It passes through the process of, of breaking down. And as it is broken down into smaller molecules, it's broken down into a substance referred to as fatty acid and glycerol. This fatty acid and glycerol also gives out energy, also contains energy components, and they have the ability to give out energy but they are more responsible in forming the adipose tissues of the body and helps in the lubrication of the dermals of the skin. They also helps in the formation of the zygomatic fluids that is found in the joints and also helps in, in the lubrication of the joints. So the, the fat and the oil are mainly seen as body lubricants. Conclusion, food is anything we eat or drink for the purpose of nourishing the body. We have seen food, and I'm sure you're imagining it now. Oh, so all these things I eat for the purpose of nourishing the body, giving the body energy, keeping the body protected from infections. So all these foods I eat, they are very important. Yes, of a truth, they are very, very important anything we eat for the purpose of nourishing the body. We also look at classes of food. So we have six classes of food. We have the carbohydrates. We have the protein. We have fat and oil. We have vitamins. We have minerals. And we have water. I said the carbohydrate is seen as energy-giving food. And when it is completely digested, it gives glucose. We said protein is seen as bodybuilding food, and when it is completely digested, it gives the body what we refer to as amino acid, which is responsible for bodybuilding. We also look at fat and oil. We say fat and oil is the body lubricants 
They are seen as body lubricating food. And when they are completely digested, they give us what we refer to as fatty acid and glycerol. I will also look at saturated fats. I will also look at the unsaturated fats. I will say the, the saturated fats is solid at room temperature, while the unsaturated fats is liquid at room temperature. We look at consumption. I will say the, the unsaturated fats is gotten from plant and is best for consumption. Why the saturated fat uh, might lead to other body diseases and is not so much healthy for, for consumption. Evaluation. Now I want to leave you with this. I hope you have your bios and papers before the homework. Now you write. What is food? We have seen all these things. What is food? Mention the six classes of food. Mention the six classes of food. I'm sure you have been conversant with all this food you've been eating food. Now, all this food you've been eating, can you classify them? Put them. You know the type of food that is found in your locality? Classify them according to their class. Write one source of each class of food. Each of the food you mentioned. Can you write the source? What is a saturated fat? What is the differences between a saturated fat and unsaturated fat? Right. I'm sure you have gotten this. That is okay. Your assignment. That's your take-home assignment. Write short notes on the following classes of food. Write short notes on the following classes of food. Number one, vitamin. Number two, minerals. Number three, water. Write short notes on the following classes of food. I want to say bye for now. See the man your host. Abananta Emmanuel saying bye for now. We'll meet same time, same station. Stay safe.